Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live this week. My name's Mandy Witherby and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you all for joining me today, whether or not you're joining me live or on the replay or perhaps on YouTube. And if you are watching on YouTube, please click on the subscribe button so that you will, um, and also on the bell icon, so that you'll be notified of all of my videos when I upload them. And over time, I will be uploading more and more videos um, and perhaps some, some other little projects and techniques and things like that along the way. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. So how is everybody today? Let me know as you're jumping on and say hi. And let me know where you're watching from if it's your first time watching with me today as well. And while I'm just waiting for everybody to jump on, I will call up my um, my video onto my um, iPad so that I can see all of your comments. So just give me a moment while I get that up and running. And then we can get underway. Okay, there we go. So I can see all of your comments. Fantastic. Hi, Matthew. How are you today? Oh, you're from Woolgoolga. I was wondering where you were. New South Wales. So is that northern New South Wales, Matthew? Hi, Kathy. You're watching from Newcastle. Fantastic. Thank you for joining me today. Great to see you all. How's your long weekend been going? I'm not sure how many we'll have on today, being that it's a long weekend and now everybody's allowed to move around a little bit more. I dare say some people have gone away for the weekend and things like that. So, yeah. How's your weekend been, your long weekend been? I've just been at home, had a quiet one. Um, well, on Saturday, actually, I had my uh, catalogue, my annual catalogue virtual launch party. So that was really fun. We had that in the afternoon and... Um, it went a little bit longer than I expected, but uh, but it was great and we were having a lot of fun. So that was really, um, really awesome. And then yesterday I had my team meeting for my, my team. And um, today I've just been at home, had a bit of a sleep in this morning, which was nice. So hi Athena, how are you? Great to see you here today. Oh, you're just about to make some cards for your swaps, Kathy. Awesome. Yeah, loving being at home. Me too. <laughs> I see all these people congregating outside and it makes me nervous. So I'm happy just to stay at home where I feel safe. <laughs> and oh, you're sorting your paper stash, Athena. Awesome. So on the weekend, we did a big clean out as well of all of the retired items. So we have um, quite a lot of retired things from... Um, the previous catalog plus prior catalogs as well so we've ended up with several boxes full of retired items so we've been sorting those and Amber's been a great help Amber is my daughter and she works as my assistant um, she's actually a graphic designer um, a qualified graphic designer so she is very great very good with um, design and um, things like that so she's got a really keen design eye so she makes a great assistant and is very helpful so yes so it was her job to deal with all of the retired stuff so <laughs> I didn't have to um, spend my time on that so that's good hey Leslie great to see you how's your long weekend going <laughs> oh that sounds interesting Matthew a slide and lock fun fold card Wow, that sounds really cool. Uh, is, is that one that you already have the measurements and the instructions for or is that one that you're designing yourself, Matthew? <laughs> so I'll jump into, continue to keep um, commenting. I'll keep looking down for the comments, but I'll jump into our news for today. So of course we have our beautiful new annual catalogue, which is now live. So this is my um, my copy and I always get a copy spiral bound for myself just because um, this is my working copy and I'm using it every day and it just is easier. I like to open it up flat and having it spiral bound, I'm able to do that. And then I just have a clear plastic cover put onto um, the front 
and also onto the back just to protect it and then that gets me through for the entire year. I haven't put my tabs on the side yet. I've just got a sticky note for what we're going to be playing with today but I haven't put all my tabs on the side. Usually I, I tabulate each of the sections I want to be able to access quickly uh, but I haven't had time to do that yet. We've been busy with so many other things. So um, yeah. Oh, you had your family over for lunch today, Leslie. That's lovely. Very good. That's great that you're able to see them again. I bet you really missed them terribly when you weren't able to see them. <laughs> yeah, so our beautiful annual catalogue is live. And now it's live. I can actually open up the pages while I'm live and I can show you the inside. So hopefully most of you already have your annual catalogues. But if you don't, if you're new to Stampin' Up! Um, or perhaps you don't have a perhaps you're not new to Stampin' Up! but you don't have a demonstrator that you're yet working with I would love to help you and I'd love to get one of those catalogues out to you so if you don't have a demonstrator and you're here in Australia please give me a shout out and um, let me know and I'd love to get a catalogue out to you I've got a little bit of fluff floating around here I can see it in the lights and it's really annoying me there no I missed it <laughs> I think I got it that time. Uh, it was distracting me. Um, yes, so let me know and that would be awesome. Uh, also too, we have our beginner brochure that has come out. Um, there's a couple of items we are still waiting on from the beginner brochure, so I don't have that to show you um, at the moment. Um, because of COVID-19, there's been a couple of items that have been delayed in going live. Um, so yeah, so we're just waiting on that. Um, but yeah, but some of the other things that are in that catalog are actually in that brochure, I should say, are also in the annual catalog as well. So, um, yeah, so that's great. So, so a um, couple of promotions I will let you know about at the moment. We have an awesome joining promotion at the moment for your starter kit, which is the pick a free bundle starter kit promotion. So if you, I did talk about it last week, so you may have heard me speak of it already. So when people join Stampin' Up! between now and the 30th of June, um, not only do you only pay $169, but get to choose $235 worth of product. So you're already getting that $66 worth of product plus your free shipping on your starter kit. As well as that, during this promotion, you can also choose a free bundle. So the bundle can be a stamp set and die bundle or a stamp set and punch bundle, whatever um, you like, whichever bundle you like, you can choose that for free. And here in Australia, the top pricing bundle um, is a stamp set and die bundle to the value of $104.25. So if you wanted that bundle, you could get that bundle for free. So that is another huge saving. So when you join my team, there is no um, pressure for you to sell. You can purely just buy the per products for yourself and enjoy a 20 to 25% discount, which is awesome. So um, if you try it out for a, a few months and then you decide it's not for you, that's not a problem. There's no lock-in contracts or anything like that. You just go back to being my customer. You basically stop ordering as a demonstrator and you go back to being my customer. Um, but there's no no issues at all with that but this is a great joining offer so I encourage you to check that out and if you would like more information about that please feel free to get in contact with me um, messenger is probably the best way and then that way you can be sure to or you can see my contact details there you're welcome to give me a call or um, email me and um, then I can give you more information about that so because it's a great joining promotion and um, and we've got the brand new catalogue so why not get 20% or off all of those beautiful products so I'll leave that one with you to have a think about but yeah please let me know okay um, hi Chitska how are you thank you for joining me today all right so the next promotion we have we've got a couple of promotions running this month which is awesome um, for the launch of our new catalogue. Our other one is our annual catalogue kickoff celebration. And with this one, for qualifying orders, whether or not you're making a large purchase yourself or if you're um, having an online 
uh, virtual workshop with me, which you can let me know if that's something you're interested in, if you'd like to gather your friends and have a virtual workshop or party. Um, that needs to be before the end of June, by the 30th of June. Or if you're putting in a large order and you know that when you order over $250, you get Stampin' Rewards. So you get to use those Stampin' Rewards and it's a percentage of the um, the sale the, or the purchase. Then you get to use that to get free product. Now on top of that, at the moment during this promotion, if your sales are over $400, you also will get an additional $40 on top of the Stampin' Rewards. So if you had friends and you wanted to gather together some um, some sales from your friends, show them your catalog, put them together with yours, um, then that is a great way to get boost up your um, purchases and take advantage of that promotion. So yeah, so keep that one in mind as well if you've got a really long wish list. But then also too, don't forget that if you do have a really long wish list, then it's also a great time to join as well because then you can get a discount on all of your future purchases as well. So it's a bit like weighing up which way, which way to go, but joining there's so many additional benefits as well and additional bonuses and um, rewards that Stampin' Up! gives us as demonstrators as well. So let me know if you'd like more information. Okay, also too, I have my annual catalogue paper share. So whenever we have a new catalogue come out, I put out a paper share and I did talk about it last week. Now, it, basically what a paper share is, is you're sharing in a um, pack of papers. And in this, in this case, it's all of the um, designer series papers in the catalogue. So you can find them on pages... Um, let me find the pages 148 to 150. So there's lots and lots. I'm just finding that for you now. I didn't have that tagged. So we've got all these. I'm going to hold this up in front of my face for a moment. It's got all these beautiful papers. Okay, plus the ones over the page. These ones here. Just excluding these ones. I don't include these ones in it, but all the other patterned papers are all included in the share. And basically you're getting a quarter pack of each of those um, in my paper share. So I have information sheets and registration forms for that. So if that's something that you're interested in, please get in contact with me. The, um, the cutoff of the RSVP for that or the registration date I should say for that is this Wednesday the 10th of June so you've only got a couple of days to let me know if you'd like to participate in my share and then what I can do is I'll send you the information sheet and also the registration form which needs to come back to me um, so what a lot of people are doing because everything is virtual at the moment they can't get it to me in person they've been just um, filling it in and then taking a photograph of it or scanning it and then sending it back to me. So let me know if you would like information about that. Cutoff day again is this Wednesday. And then um, I hope to have all of those papers out by the end of the month because once everybody has paid, I then have to place the order. I then have to receive the order, cut the papers, package them and then ship them out to you all. So um, yeah, so it take, the turnaround is a couple of weeks there. Oh, hi Glenda, great to see you. Thanks for joining me today. Okay, now also too, I did mention earlier, but in case you're just jumping on, remember too that I now have a new YouTube channel. So I would love it if you would look it up. It's just under my name, Mandy Witherby. Um, I always do put a link as well. So um, when I finish this, Facebook Live, I'll put a link um, in the description at the top so that you can find my YouTube channel. And then if you want to subscribe to that, so you'll see um, my videos come up and remember to click on the bell icon so that you'll get notified every time that I um, upload a new video. All right, that is all my news for today. So that's a very quick news session today. And now I'm ready to get onto our creative time. Are you ready? Do you want to see what we're playing with today? So let me move my folder. 
we are going to be playing with some more beautiful new product so what I'll do is I will oops I left that one out of my folder hang on one sec I'll pop that over there all right so what I'm going to do is I will um, cover up the camera and I'll tip the camera down and I will show you what we're going to be playing with today and I'm actually casing my daughter's card today. So Amber, my daughter, she helped me um, make some projects for my launch on the weekend. We both made some. And um, so I'm casing one of hers today, but I'm changing it up a little bit. So I will show you the original and then I'll show you um, how I'm going to be changing that up. So that'll be a lot of fun. And hopefully you'll get some creative inspiration from these projects as well. All right, so let me now cover up the camera and I'll flip down and we'll get started. Just one moment while I get this ready. And I think I forgot to flip my cameras, so let me just do that. Otherwise, we'll be upside down and back to front. Okay, adjust my lighting so you can all see. I remembered a couple of weeks ago I forgot to adjust my lighting so my desk was in the half dark. <laughs> all right, we'll get everything all lined up ready and then I can show you what we're going to be playing with today. I'm very excited about this card. I really, really love this card that Amber designed and um, it's really, really pretty. All right, so I'll just get that all set up, move over a little bit more. All righty. So first of all, I'm going to show you what um, we're playing with. So I'll show you the suite. So the suite we're playing with today is the In Good Taste suite. And um, if any of you haven't already seen this one, oh, you have to check this one out. It is so gorgeous. So we've got lots and lots going on in this suite. We've got um, lots of textures which I absolutely love and even the samples in the catalog are beautiful so this suite has a stamp set and dies it has a designer series paper an embossing folder and it has wood elements as well so we're going to be using all of those today and then this is the stamp set over here so beautiful beautiful um, designs in this stamp set I really love it and where you see the um, the gray ghosting around the stamped image that's when you know that there is a die that coordinates with those stamps okay so these other ones um, if you're using those they don't have dies with them so you can use them in other ways but yeah just even, the samples are just beautiful up here if you would like to get the stamp set and die bundle um, there's one number there that you can use to purchase those so you don't need to put them in separately and then ordering them together as a bundle you do receive 10% so that's the tasteful textures bundle um, but if you love everything from this suite and I'm going to show you all the designer series paper in a moment if you love everything in this suite there is one code for you to um, enter in for the entire in good taste sweet collection so the code for that here is one five four one four seven and then you'll get everything in the suite so that is uh, stampin up makes it nice and easy for us all right so let me show you so there's the stamp set um, and on the case here the images are shown just at 95 percent just so that they can um, fit onto the the front of the stamp case and I just noticed forgive my nails I just noticed they're a little bit yellow I was juicing some carrot earlier today and I just noticed that my nails have actually turned a little bit yellowy orange <laughs> that's from my carrot juice <laughs> um, we've got the beautiful embossing folder which is a gorgeous um, it's like a fabric or oh, I sort of think of it like a, a cushion like it's a it's a really beautiful texture in that embossing folder and we're going to be using that today um, ah yes thank you and um, I just remembered I forgot to put down my website and my blog and my host code which is very big this week <laughs> I completely forgot to put those down 
so there they are there so if you are um, shopping with me you can go to my blog which is mandy's papercraft creations.blogspot.com and click on the shop button that you'll find on the top left hand side or you can go directly to my website as well and click on the shop um, button there as well and then this is my current host code for June when shopping with me if you use my host code and you're purchasing over $30 you will receive um, a gift a card a thank you card and a gift from me so um, remember to use that when you're shopping in my online store all right so I'll show you the beautiful papers the designer series papers from this suite so there are um, 12 designs and you get two sheets of each design and they are all double-sided so this is the in good taste designer series paper and as you can see there are some gorgeous textures so we've got stone tiles wood um, fabrics um, just really really beautiful so this is one side and then I'll show you the other side this is the other side oops hang on let me flip them around there we go so then we're going up the same way so you've got these beautiful wood textures in here and some more tiles and some more fabrics there so lots and lots and lots of texture going on in this designer series paper so this is um, one of our favorites from the entire catalog actually as far as the papers go actually probably the favorite I think both Amber and I love texture so yeah so that that's the papers and the um, wood elements these are the wood elements I've just had to pop mine into a sandwich bag because we've already opened them um, so of course I didn't want them to fall out because some are very small in here so this is the in good taste elements I'll take those out to show you we have got some little tiny ones floating around there in the bag but there are quite a few sheets in here. Oops. See if I can get them all out of the packet. There we go. So we've got, and you can see I've used some of these already, but we've got leaves. Actually, we're going to use that big leaf, so we'll leave that one out. So we've got three sheets of these leaves, and these ones have come out too. And then there's a sheet of these ones as well I'm not sure if there was two sheets of these ones and I've already used up one I can't remember but you can see I've punched these out already um, which were little crosses and they have like a, oh there's one in here actually there is one little one left I'll hold it up and see if you can see on one side it's got like a little cross um, sort of like burnt into it or etched into the wood so we've got those and then we've got the little octagons which we're going to be using a couple of those today as well so these are beautiful and these ones have got the design etched into them on one side as well and then the other side is plain so you can use them either side I think this side is the nicer side with that design sort of burnt or etched into them and of course yeah you can see where we've used them all and we've got those little little leaves there as well so I'll just pop those straight back into the bag and I'll leave that one and that one out because we're going to use those. All right. Now, who's ready to see the card that we're going to be casing? Oh, hi, Julie. I just saw that you had jumped on. Um, oh, only one sheet of the little ones too. Thank you very much, Kathy. You've only just opened yours. Oh, thank you very much for that. Yeah, I couldn't remember because we'd opened them a couple of weeks ago. And um, I couldn't remember how many were in the of the smaller sheets. All right, so the card, the beautiful card that Amber designed that we are casing today is this one here, using elements from or using everything from the suite, and just with the addition of the braided linen, linen trim there. But how gorgeous is that card? She's just done such a great job with this. We're going to change it up, and we're going to do a pink version today. So. Um, yeah, I hope that you like what um, I've come up with, with the pink version. It's basically casing the same design, but just in using some of the different papers and different colored cardstocks. So I'll pop that one to the side and we'll get started and I'll give you all the measurements as we go. 
Okay. So here's all my bits and pieces for my card today. And I've got my cardstock all there ready. Now we are going to be playing with um, Blushing Bride. And uh, sorry, that was, it looked like we were playing with um, the deeper colour there, the Melon Mambo, but we're not. We're actually playing with Blushing Bride. <laughs> um, some of the wood texture and then this gorgeous pink um, fabric paper here as well and this one as well which has got that beautiful texture um, and also very vanilla so let me just this one's already been scored and folded so this is your card base so it measures at 21 centimeters by 14.8 centimeters and it's scored at 10.5 and that is where we're going to make our fold so I will bring in my bone folder Hey Shazza, how are you? Yes, it would make a nice mail card too, Glenda, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks, Kathy. Yeah, she did a great job, didn't she? I'm looking forward to seeing how the pink version turns out too. <laughs> all right, so with all of our bits, we're going to first add this piece of designer series paper so this one is measured at um, ba -ba -ba -ba, let me get the right one uh, this is the oh now I'm not sure which one this is hang on a minute let me measure it again so I know it's 14.85 um, because it's the same length as the card and it is 2.4 2.5 yeah 2.5 centimeters wide sorry so we are just going to pop that one down here at the bottom now this one oh sorry this one isn't 14.85 um, this one's 14.45 that's right because we have a border around it oh my goodness I need to look at my measurements that are written down here for me <laughs> all right so we're going to adhere that I'm just going to use some snail now our snail adhesive sadly has retired but there is good news we have a new adhesive that's coming to replace it called stamp and seal but the stamp and seal is not available yet just because of coronavirus um, it has delayed the shipping of that um, but that will be available very very soon so i'm looking forward to that and we'll also have the stamp and seal plus as well which is a stronger adhesive um, similar to our old fuse that we used to have if you remember the fuse we had a few years ago uh, it's similar to that but it's much easier to use and it's um, got the strength that the, that the um, the other one had as well the fuse had okay so that's that's our um, base piece now I'll just pop that aside for a moment we have a cardstock piece in Very Vanilla of 14.45 by 8.3 centimetres. And we're going to use that as our um, piece just to adhere our other pieces onto just for a bit of stability because then we're going to pop that up onto dimensionals. So basically this is going to be lined up exactly um, with the edges there. So this little panel is one centimetre wide by 14.45 centimeters long so i'm just going to use a little bit of actually i should have got out my no it's okay i was going to say i should have got out my silicon craft sheet but it's all good oh i did get a little bit on my paper there let me just rub that off so that it doesn't stick to anything Okay, so then this is just going to be lined up along the bottom edge here. There we go. So that beautiful wood texture there. And then we've got this gorgeous vanilla um, fabric. It reminds me again of a cushion. We've got red cushions that have a similar pattern to this one. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, you can see that quite well on the camera, I think. So then we're just going to add that one um, to the top part of there oh hey Jenny how are you oh no not as tired today I had a bit of a sleep well I didn't sleep very well last night I have to say but 
I um, did have a bit of a sleep in today. So, um, yeah, so I think I'm all good to get through the day today. <laughs> All right, so then with this piece, we're just going to line that up with the top part of that panel and so that we have that overlapping the wood panel there, okay? And then that whole piece is going to be popped up onto dimensionals. So we'll get our dimensionals out and I'm going to use up some of my edge pieces. I hope you all use up your edge pieces of your dimensionals and don't waste them because... They work just as well as the hexagons and you don't want to waste any. So I usually just cut them in two segments, except for that corner piece, of course. So I'll pop that one up there and pop some of those along there. And make sure you put down plenty of dimensionals because this is quite a large panel and you don't want it to be um, sagging. So I'll go to my other pack now and I'll get my take your pick tool to grab those other ones off there, my little hexagons. Yeah, so be sure to lay down plenty of dimensionals because you don't want this panel to um, sag at all and a good way to test it is once you've got your dimensionals on there before you remove the backing paper just have a little press and feel if you feel like it's going to sag in any places and I think I would like to add a little bit more dimensional up here actually because I feel like that is just a little bit saggy there so then and I know that I'm putting elements up here yeah there we go so that will be great um oh my sound has gone can everybody else hear me okay can everyone just let me know if you can hear me okay um somebody has just said that they can't hear me so i'll just pause there for a moment until you let me know if you're able to hear me i'm just waiting to see the comments waiting for my ipad to catch up with the comments just to be sure that you can all still hear me okay. Yep, okay, Julie, you can, awesome. Oh, great, okay, great, okay. So it might just be Jenny's sound. Um, is somebody, Amber, if you're watching, would you be able to just let Jenny know to maybe jump out and jump back in again? Oh yes, the trim, thanks, Amber. <laughs> I would have forgotten that too. Um, can you just pop a little message in there for Jenny to just maybe go out and go back in? Um, everyone else seems to have messages. Uh, everyone else seems to have sound okay. <laughs> no worries, Kathy. <laughs> Typos. Oh, good. I'm glad everyone can hear me. Okay, good. All right. So I will... Um, Amber has just reminded me to put down the... Um, the trim before I adhere that and I'm glad that she said that because I was too busy talking and I would have forgotten so before I do that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay that on because I had a couple of trim trims out and I wasn't sure if I was going to use the same color that Amber used or a different one so I first of all had out the faux suede trim because that kind of matches in with the wood here but I'm feeling like that's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit darker. So I'm feeling like that's a little bit heavy. Oops. So the other one I had out was just some of our linen trim. Thanks, Amber. So I've got a little bit of our linen trim. We could wrap a little, we could wrap a couple of strands of our linen trim around. That would be great. Amber used the braided linen, linen trim, which I love. We use this one a lot, actually. We both really like this one. Where's the end? There it is. So the linen trim that I've got is the same colour, and the braided linen trim is the one that she used. But let's change it up a bit. Let's use the, the um, ordinary linen trim, and I'm going to run two strands around the card. So let's do that. Now I might need to move that dimensional back off because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get the trim around there. So I'm just changing the ends of my take your pick tool to my spatula end and I'm just going to gently lift off that corner dimensional 
so that I can get my trim around there. There we go, that came off okay. I'll probably replace that with a new one, I think. All right, and I don't think that piece is going to be long enough, so let's use the roll. And I'll probably, I'll leave enough length to tie a bow on one end as well. And we'll just wrap that around a couple of times. Oops, nearly lost the whole thing on the floor. And let's go one more time. Let's go, okay, great. So I've gone around three times and then this time I'm going to tie it off. So let's just cut that. Don't ask me about the measurements for that. <laughs> I don't know what the measurements were for that. <laughs> I basically just wrapped it around three times and I've left some um, on the end there. It could be a meter or so, I'm not sure. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that piece around all three of those to tie them together. And I'll go the opposite direction with the other one. There we go. And that will keep them all together. And then I'm just going to tie that in a knot to hold that together. I hope I've left myself enough to tie a bow. Oh, yeah, that should be fine. And then once you've done that, you can fiddle with the fibres. I usually like to um, stretch them out a little bit just to separate them. They're a little bit like cat's whiskers, aren't they? There we go. And I like them to crisscross like that just randomly. And then I will tie my bow. There we go. So I love that when we have a design, um, we can just case it, which is, for those of you that don't know, it's copy and selectively edit. And then we can change it up um, with the different designer series papers, with um, different elements we can add, and we can um, create an entirely different card using the same layout, which I love to do. I love that we're able to do that. All right, so then I'll just cut those ends there. Now I might trim them down a little bit more later, but I'll just leave them at that length for the time being until we get all of our other elements on there. And that's great. So now I can pop a dimensional up there in the corner and I might pop a mini up there just so that we don't put that over the top of that twine in case I want to move that twine a little bit later. So I'll change the end of my take your pick tool again to the pointy end. And I'm just going to pop a mini up there and I might pop another one further along just to give it a bit more stability and I'll pop one just down here as well. There we go. So that was an easy fix, but I'm so glad Amber rem reminded me. So many times have I put down um, my front panel onto my card and I've forgotten to add the twine. I, it's, I do it quite regularly. <laughs> All right. So now we can pop that down onto the front and then we're going to build up the rest of the elements onto the front of the card. Oops. All right, so I'll just remove all the backings from my dimensionals there. And how did Jenny go with her sound? Did Jenny, can you hear me okay now? Is your sound okay? Sound okay? Oh, you're liking my version better than yours, Amber. No, I don't think so. You're the creator. You always come up with beautiful designs. I think they're both going to be beautiful. Oops. There we go. I guess it depends if you're a pink person or a um, blue person too. Some people might prefer the blue and some might prefer the pink. I've got a few friends who don't like pink, so they would probably prefer your version, Amber. Move that up a little bit. Okay. And what I'm probably going to do as well is I, I might open that up to put this on. Sometimes it's easier to open up your card to add your layer rather than try and do it while it's folded because when it's folded it wants to keep popping up but if you lay it back out flat again then it makes it easier to um, to get that to just sit nice and flat while you line everything up and I'm just trying to line that up with that border so I've got that fairly even border as, as even as possible around there we go 
<gasps> gorgeous and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a little glue dot or I might do that at the end actually I'm going to pop a little glue dot just under where my bow sits I always like to do that just to make sure that bow stays put where it's meant to be but I'll do that later on just to be sure that I don't want to shift anything around okay so the next step for us to do is to do our stamping so we've got our base all ready to go so we'll set that aside for the moment and we're going to bring in our Blushing Bride um, Classic Stamping Pad. And we're going to bring in... Um, I can't remember if I gave you the dimensions of this panel here. If I didn't, I'll let you know what it is. It was 14.45 um, by 7.7. .7. Yeah, I think I forgot to give you the dimensions of that one. Okay, so now we are going to um, stamp our feathers. So I will turn that up this way and I've already got my feather stamp on my block. So we're going to stamp both feathers in the same colour. Now I haven't stamped this one before. So let's see um, actually which way. Yeah, no, we'll go that way because we'll do them both side by side. So we'll do one and then we'll do the second one stamped off. Now the Blushing Bride stamped off is really, really faint. So I'm not sure that that's going to be dark enough. So I'll stamp two of the same colour. Now I just came up with another idea. I'm going to grab my um, I'm going to grab my Stamparatus because I'm wondering if we how this would look if we double stamped and made it darker. So let me grab my Stamparatus. Okay, now if you don't have a Stamparatus, this is a stamp positioning tool and it has many, many uses. It comes in very, very handy. Um, now this stamp already has the foam built into it, our cling stamp. They have the red rubber stamps already have the foam built into them. So we don't need our foam mat, so we'll just take that out. I've got just some um, grid paper here, some mini grid paper that goes with the Stamparatus, which I'll pop in there. And let me just clean this. I just want to see what it's going to look like if we stamp that ink twice and see how dark we can get it. But also too, without losing any of the detail. These stamps that we're using here are a distinctive stamp, which means they have um, additional etching into the stamp itself. So what happens with that is it gives you different opacities and different... Um, gives you all the shading and all of that in your stamp itself which is beautiful okay so I know that's where that's going to stamp all right so let's let's give this a go and just see so I'm inking that up and because I've got my magnet in place there I know that my cardstock isn't going to move and I've got that butted up right in the corner there all right now let's ink that again in the same colour and we'll stamp it over the top again and let's see if we get a darker feather oh we do look there we go so now we've got a darker one and a slightly um, lighter one which this is just first generation stamping and this is actually double stamping so let's go with those two I'm happy with that now all right so I'll just give my stamp a little clean there Now there's no dies for these um, feathers, so I'm just going to fussy cut them. But because they're a fairly solid shape, it'll be quite quick for me to do that. So just remove my oh my very strong magnet, and I'll turn that over so that I can let that air dry. All right. So can you see the difference in the colours between the two? So this one's a little bit darker now because we stamped that ink twice. So we'll just bring in, um, I'm just using my paper snips and these ones I keep especially just for cutting paper and ribbon. My other scissors that I have is are only for tape. Um, I don't inter, intermingle them because otherwise um, these ones will lose their sharpness. So have we heard back from Jenny yet? Did she? How did she go with the sound? 
she 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 managed to get back on okay so when you're cutting your images out um, it's up to you if you decide to leave a little white border when we um, die cut with our dies they leave a bit of a white border or you can cut it as um, you can cut it right close to the image it's up to you how you like to or how you prefer to um, cut your images um, back in the day a long time ago many years ago when I first started we always cut right to the um, the stamped image like right to the, the outline nowadays we tend to leave a bit of a, a white border although I did go a bit close on that set that side there but that's okay oh all good now Jenny fantastic I'm glad that you can hear me now <laughs> yeah sometimes our um devices play up a bit don't they with the sound and things like that especially with Facebook lives a lot of people have that trouble and um, the only thing you can ever do is really to go back out and come back in again so it depends on your internet and depends on your device and things like that so um, yeah but I'm glad you can hear me now all right so then we'll just cut out this other one and as you can see it's a really easy shape to cut out this one because it's quite a solid shape it's just that little bit there but if you didn't want to necessarily cut out that extra little bit you could just cut that straight down and then just when you get to the quill of your feather there we go okay so there's our two leaves so now they're side by side we can see the difference in the colors there so that's beautiful yeah because the lighter one was just that's the second generation when it was stamped off it's just really really pale in that blushing bride ink um, which is it would be great for a background actually um, yeah if you were wanting to do stamp some feathers in a of a background that would be fantastic to do them stamping off but it was a little bit light for what I wanted all right so we've got those set aside now for my sentiment um, this is the label that Amber used for hers and this is the um, Sahara sand color so I thought I would try with that but I also wanted to do one in the very vanilla just to um, see the difference and how it will look on the front of the card so I've got some early espresso for my sentiment which I thought would match well with the deep wood and keeping with that natural sort of coloration so I'm going to stamp both of these. Um, this one's already die cut, so that's good. That makes it easy. Well, hopefully easy. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it in the middle though. All right, so I'm using my grid paper. I love my grid paper. It helps me line things up. And I'll just stamp that down. There we go. Yeah, that's an easy stamp to line up actually. And then let's do one on the very vanilla, which I haven't yet die cut. So then we'll bring in the die cutting machine. And that one I can just stamp anywhere because I haven't um, die cut that one yet. Okay, and I'm just going to get some scrap paper to just stamp off that ink so that I can give that a clean straight away. It's a really nice stamp. We're just saying hello with beautiful font there as well. The fonts in the these um, in this stamp set are really beautiful too. All right, so I'll give that a clean. Oh, hey, Rose, how are you? No, no worries. I'm casing Amber's card today, Rose. I'm. She made a, a blue one. I'll bring that back in at the end. And I'm doing a pink version of her card. And I've changed up some of the papers a little bit. And we're using the In Good Taste Suite today, which is one of my favourites from the catalogue. I think I actually have lots of favourites in the catalogue today. Um, this time. <laughs> Alright, so we are going to be using the Tasteful Label dies. So in the Tasteful Label dies that coordinate with this suite, we have all of these different beautiful dies. And they all have detailing around the edges. Some have stitch detailing, some have an added um, embossed edging. And these ones um, have a stitched edging as well, and as well as... Um, like a zigzag around the edges those circle ones so they're really cool all right so we are using this one here 
and we also when I have the die cutting machine out I'll pop those aside while we have the die cutting machine out I'm also going to cut our other label which is this big one here so that label is going to sit underneath this one so we'll do those both together I'll just bring in the die cutting machine so this is our old die cutting machine um, this is the big shot we um, are going to be having a brand new stamp and cut and embossing machine coming out which will be um, stampin ups own brand um, it's not available yet because again of COVID-19 um, we are still waiting on that but we hope to have that within the coming months and um, I will certainly let everybody know as soon as that is available and the exciting thing is that we not only are going to have the big machine we're also having a little mini machine so that is super exciting so you'll find that in your catalogue um, but just remember that it's not available just yet even though it's in the catalogue um, we can't order those just yet all right so I might just move that one over and we'll see if we can fit this one in at the same time Ooh, might be slight squeeze let's see how we go all right that one shouldn't need a um, shouldn't need any washi tape on that one because I've got a large piece there that I'm cutting out all right let's see if we can get these both through together make sure that's within my sandwich there okay so we'll crank that through sorry if I'm bumping the table as I do that I think it might bump a little bit because my lights shake oh there we go they both die cut beautifully so there's our gorgeous um, stitched label there and then we've got that one that's got an embossed edge around the edge too of the label which is beautiful and I think I've got a little bit of additional ink just on there but I'm not going to worry too much about that because there is so much else going on this card I don't think it's going to really be noticed okay just put my dies back away all right now with this one we are going to emboss this as well which I should have done while I had the embossing machine out and I completely forgot and we're using the tasteful textile 3d embossing folder all right so this one has us oh, such a beautiful texture in this one it's really really awesome so we're just going to pop that in I'll just run that through the machine off camera while I am um, it'll be a lot quicker for me to do that while I'm doing that um, here's I'll just show you Amber's card again so that you can have a look at that while I'm doing this bit There we go so there is let's move her card away again there is that beautiful embossing folder so you can choose which side you use it that is the correct side um, but you can use the debossed side as well it gives a different a slightly different look as well so I'm not sure if you can see the difference in the um, the debossed side and the embossed side but that's the side we'll be using today so okay so let's bring in our card now and all of our elements and we will see okay and we've got our leaf here from our wood elements and these leaves just to show you as well these leaves have got the um, the burnt etching into them as well which is really beautiful okay and we need our little our little octagons all right so now it's just a matter of layering this all up so what I'm going to do first is um, I'm just going to decide which label I would like to use so that's the very vanilla 
and then and that'll be um, up on dimensionals or the Sahara Sand. Ooh, I think I like the Sahara Sand one better actually, and it ties in with the twine. Yeah, I think we'll go with the Sahara Sand. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just adhere this one down now with um, dimensional. Oh, sorry, not with dimensionals, with, no, I'm not. I'm going to use my tear and tape because this is textured. Um, whenever you have a textured piece that you're laying down, I do recommend that you use a strong adhesive because of that texture. Um, sometimes the lighter adhesives don't grip on well. Uh, in between all of that texture so it's always good to use a really strong adhesive or a glue so I'm just going to use some strips of my tear and tape which is super super strong once you get this one down you won't get it back up again so <laughs> you always have to be sure of where you're putting your um, your items down that have your tear and tape on them and this one's just going to be adhered flat and then the sentiment label will be adhere, adhered with uh, dimensionals over the top of this one. There we go. So when you do use this embossing folder, it actually makes the cardstock really soft. So it kind of breaks the fibres down a bit in that cardstock and it makes it really, really soft. Okay, so we're moving this over to about there. And make sure I'm getting that reasonably straight. There we go. All right, now I'm going to pop this one up onto dimensionals. Um, where did I put those? There they are. Oh, you like the pink and the textures? Yes, I thought you might, Judy. <laughs> You're a pink girl like me, aren't you? We like pink. <laughs> okay whoops yeah this um really really i'm enjoying working with this suite it's really beautiful and this is my first play with it because um amber is the one who had played with it before me which is often the way she often gets to my new products before i do <laughs> but she usually asks me first so so that's all good Okay, and then we're going to pop this one over the label, the central part, centre part of the label, but just so that it's going down a little bit as well. Um, so we will pop that down about there, and I'm lining that up with the bottom. There we go. I think I've got that reasonably straight. Fantastic. All right, so let's pop our feathers up there now. So these are going to just sit up here. Oh, and in fact, that was supposed to overlap. Oh, that's all right. I can still sneak that under. They will overlap like that. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, I'm excited by this card. I love it. It's so pretty. Um, I'm going to this time use my Tombow. Oh, that's okay, Judy. No worries. Yeah, I know. With the long weekend, it sort of throws everything out, doesn't it? <laughs> Although for me, I don't work on Mondays, so... Every Monday is like a public holiday for me. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop that down. And I've put the Tombow there so that I can position, reposition that if I'm not happy with where I've placed it. So I'm just working out where I'm placing this other one first. And then see, I can move that now because I've got the Tombow on there. And bring that down a little bit. There we go. Great. I'm happy with that now. So I'll give that a press on there. And then we'll use some Tombow on the other one. I love that we've got... Oh, you've been making cards with all the leftovers. Oh, awesome. From the making, uh, from the um, goodie bag Judy from my launch. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. That's great. I'm glad that you're finding a use for them all. And I'm going to just lift that label up a little bit. Lucky I didn't put the um, adhesive right at the very edge of that label because that gives me the opportunity of lifting that up to just sneak that under there. And I want these at slightly different levels. So I'm going to bring mine 
light pink one down a little bit. There we go. Okay, and we'll just push that down. Now, then we've got our wood flower as well. I mean, our leaf, which is going to go there. I was just going to have a look to see the small, how the smaller one looked as well. So we've got the large ones and we've also got the small ones. So I'm going to see what a small one would look like. see oh yes I like the small one okay I'm changing up Amber's design a little bit and I'm going to use the small one now this one doesn't have any etching on the other side uh, it's just a bit lighter on that side um, if you can see that it's a bit lighter on that side and it's got um, the darker tones sort of on that side so I'm going to use it that way up and I'm just going to use some glue dots oh that's really good Judy Awesome. You'll have to put them, you'll have to show us what you make in um, the, the launch party group. All right, so I'm just going to pop down two glue dots onto there. And we'll have that little leaf just coming down at a bit of an angle there like that. There we go. Beautiful. And now... I'm going to add some of these little wood hexagons down and I think I'm going to be using Tombow glue for these because I think they're a bit small for glue dots. They're really tiny. They are tiny, tiny. So we'll bring back in that Tombow and I'll pop down a little bit of glue just on the back. I won't need too much because I don't want it oozing. And we'll pop that down in the middle there. Give that a bit of a push. And then we'll put one on the other side as well. So you'll notice that this card actually doesn't have any bling, which is very unusual for Amber and I. We always have ribbon and bling on every one of our cards. But these little wood embellishments or wood elements are actually in place of the bling. So they are our bling today. Oh, okay, no worries, Judy, then maybe don't put it in the group. <laughs> That's okay. You can send it to me privately and I can and you can show me that way. So there we go. Now with our twine, I like to always separate the ends of my twine just for a bit of added texture. So I just sort of play with the ends of those until those ends separate rather than having that blunt um, edge which you can have you can have the blunt end if you like if you like that look but I like to have just a little bit more added texture so there we go in fact this this one might be a little bit long I'll just trim that one off a little bit and I do usually like when I'm doing twine I like to have the ends a little bit uneven whereas with ribbon of course I always feel like they need to be exactly even there we go and I was going to pop a little glue dot just under that twine too where my bow is so I'll just do that now just it helps to hold the bow in place so I'll just use my take your pick tool just to roll a little ball of the glue dot and just sneak that underneath there just to hold that in place You want that to sit, that bow to be sitting down over the top of those feathers and that leaf. There we go. My twine is a little bit curly there. It wants to keep kicking up. That's okay. All right, there we go. That is done. Finished. So how did you like the pink one? Now let's bring in the blue one and we'll have a look at them side by side. Oh, thanks, Leslie. Thanks, Glenda. Thanks, Julie. Oh, hi, Wendy. No worries. Yeah, definitely catch the replay. So there you go. So there is my pink version and there is Amber's blue version. So I think they're both beautiful. It just depends if you're a pink person or you're a blue person. <laughs> um, so I hope that you really, really enjoyed those two projects 
um, yeah, it was really great just to, as I said, it's great to have a design that you can just change up, change the colors, change the designer series paper, and you get a completely different card. So um, I hope that you all really enjoyed um, watching me put that one together. So I'm going to now pop the, oh, thank you, Wendy. Thanks, Judy. And you, oh, everyone's loving both of them. Fantastic. That's great. Awesome. All right. So I'm just going to um, cover up the camera and bring the bring the camera back up to my face now so that I can say goodbye to you all in person. So just give me a moment while I get that all ready for you. Okay, let's cover that up and we'll flip back up. And I'll just adjust my lights quickly. And I'll be right back with you. There we go. Oh, nearly chopped my head off. There we go. Okay, great. So I hope that you really liked that. I will post um, photos of both of those cards onto um, my business page and also probably on my blog as well. So look out for them on my blog. Remember my blog is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com so you can go there to see my, um, my beautiful creations as well as um, getting into my sh online store from there. Just click on the shop button. Also too, I have some tutorials for sale there. So I have um, a separate page for tutorials. So you'll see the tab across the top. You just click on that one. There's information there as well about my technique club. Um, and of course, it, of course, there is a joining link there as well for anyone who may be interested in joining my team. My team is called the Papercraft Gems. And I called it that because I believe that every one of those people that join my team are precious and valued. And so I make sure to always tell them that as well, because they are all very precious and valued um, to me. So thank you all so much for joining me today. If you have any questions about anything I've spoken about today, please get in contact with me. Um, oh, you can't choose, Rose. You love both of them. That's really nice. And Athena likes both, but she's more of a blue person. Great. That's great. Let me hold both of them up together. Let's see if I can get both of them in shot. Oh, I'll go this way. There we go. Wait, wait. It's really hard to get... <laughs> it's really hard to get them um, because I'm working opposite. So, there. <laughs> I got it because I'm working opposite because the camera is flipped so it's always hard to work out because when I hold up my left hand when I'm looking in the camera it's on the right side so that's why it takes a bit of getting used to <laughs> anyway thank you all so much for joining me I hope you have a great week I hope you enjoy, enjoy the rest of your evening for our public holiday and I look forward to seeing you all again I hope I'll be able to come live again on Thursday evening um, but last week I was super, super exhausted after just starting back at work. So I was just absolutely out of it and I needed to have a nap. So I actually slept through seven o'clock. So <laughs> I wasn't there. But anyway, I will see you next time I'm on live. I hope that you're all able to join me. But have a great week, everyone. And remember to keep crafting. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye.